you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello. Welcome to Relax the Podcast. I'm Colleen Ballinger. Hiya. And you are? Eric. Sir? Eric Stockler. Eric, sir. Welcome to the first episode of 2023. And it's episode 99. <laughs> problems. Yeah, 99 problems. But you ain't one. Well, some might beg to differ with that. What do you mean? I feel like a lot of people would say, Were you I'm a problem, problem child. I'm the problem. It's me. Ah, got it. Uh, and no, I was not a problem child. I was the opposite. Should I should have seen Taylor shoes. Swift lyrics coming at me. Uh, anyway, hi, everyone. Welcome to 2023. <clears throat> We're so excited to be back again for another year of podcasts with you. Um, we just had New Year's Eve just happen and New Year's Day. How exciting the holidays times. It's kind of sad, actually. The holiday times are now officially over. Like once So in- sad. It is so sad. It's so sad. There's What holidays do we have to look forward to now? Nothing. Easter. In like a thousand months. Like I know. I'm so nothing. happy. It's I'm like so happy. Valentine's Day. Lame. It's, can we St. Had, Patrick's Day. We've had, lame. We've had fun Valentine's Days. I've had, of course we I've have. Had but it's super not, fun St. Patrick's Days. But it's not days. like Christmas and New Year's and Halloween and all the it's, fun I ones. I know. It's not. It's better because there's not uh, glitter and decorations Have everywhere. you met me? Oh, gosh. <laughs> As if there's not glitter on Valentine's Day, where have I've you been? I've never met anyone in my life who decorated for Easter. It's yeah, he thought wild. that was so bizarre that I decorated for Easter. Yeah, but there was you something do. we were you talking about. I do love a theme. I love a party. I love to. You know, it was a really big part of my childhood, and it made me so happy that my mom made such a big deal of birthday parties and mm-hmm. like. Like it was so important to me and so special that she did that. Like I have my fondest memories are like those moments with my family. So like, I love that I get to pass that on to my kids and I hope that yeah. they appreciate it as much as you know, my oh, siblings always it. did. They do. Um, but there was something the other day that you brought up and I was like, what are you talking? What was it love? I don't know. You brought up something to me the other day. Oh my God. I'm so mad. I didn't write it down that you were like, wait, everyone does this. And I was like, what are you talking about? I've never heard of this in my life. This happens a lot, by the way. So, well, one, this isn't the thing I was thinking of, but this did happen. You on New Year's Eve were like, everyone gets New Year's Eve presents. Did you get me a New Year's Eve present? I was like, what are you talking about? Well, that was, that was messing with you because I had gotten you a New Year's present. Okay. But he, he and I really knew you didn't get me anything. And of course that's not a thing. No, but people don't. he made don't. me think that like people in the world give New Year's Eve presents. And I was like, what are you saying? You're faulting me for your own gullibility. No, uh, yeah, I am. Okay. But I wasn't gullible because I fought it for so long. I was like, no one has ever done that. And you're like, are you just trying to, you're just trying to get away with the fact that you didn't get me one. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm proudly saying I was I didn't just get messing you one. with you because I surprised you with a present. But there was something else. At midnight. Me- but there was something else that you were like, people do this. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't know. Gosh, darn it. You don't remember you didn't know what, what homeroom was. I don't know. Ugh. You don't know a lot of things. That's true. I don't know a lot of things. Um, but yeah, I, I can't think of it. And I'm it. sure that this is very entertaining on a podcast Sorry, yeah, I know. to be I trying to think topic. of something. Yeah, I know. First episode of the year. And I'm just like, I don't remember what I was going to talk about for 10 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> uh, but you know what I did? It'll wanna, come to you. You know what I did want to talk about? Uh, I was like, what? the New Year's Eve moment just happened uh-huh. for everyone in this world. And I was like, it's true. It's New Year's everywhere. New Year's Eve and like New Year's Eve, like having a New Year's Eve kiss is like a, like a big deal. And I was like, oh, we should talk about like our first like New Year's Eve kiss, like moments or something. Maybe that'd be kind of awkward and funny. And then I, I thought about it so long and hard. And I do not remember having like a New Year's Eve, like first time, like a New Year's Eve kiss and being like, oh, it was like, I do not remember that moment ever happening for me. I do. Oh, for, for us? Not for us. I'm oh. saying like for like in life, Uh huh. like I don't remember that ever happening. And I'm like, I really yeah. was like, oh, we should exchange stories of like the first time we had like a New Year's Eve kiss. And I was like, oh, wait, I, I literally cannot think of it. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's good. It means you were like, I, let's talk like, about burn it from my brain. kissing other people. Yeah, let's past. talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just thought about like, well, that might be interesting to like interview each other about past uh, New, Year's New Year's Eve. Kisses? New Year's Eve, I don't know. What, what, what was your thing to do on like New Year's Eve in high school? Cause like for me, yeah, you know, we obviously have gone over in this uh, podcast, how different our high school experiences were. Mine was very sheltered and, um, you know, I'm pretty naive to what high school is actually like, uh-huh. as we've discovered on this podcast Correct. because of my experience. 
And, uh, but because of that, like, I mean, did you go to parties on New Year's Eve? Because I did I not. I like beer. Did you? <laughs> like, did you go to New oh, Year's Eve parties? Guy, I hate that guy. Um, did I go? Yes, we, there would be parties on New Year's for sure. Yeah. And you would go and you, you like stay out till midnight? Yeah. Yeah, it would be like someone would be, you know, it's a holiday. So someone's parents were away or something and there would be like a house party or something. And there would be um, consuming of adult beverages. When Underage the, drinking, guys. Um, but, you know, responsibly. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> drinking underage uh, is not always responsible, yeah, my I've dear. N- it's, never, it's never been like a shining moment. I, I don't remember. It's not, there's not like a, a g- great thing like that that stands out in my memory um mm-hmm. it always kind of kind of seems like a letdown an inevitable letdown mm-hmm. and, a, and a mess now sloppy I, I have a question for someone who had a normal high school experience uh-huh. can i interview about this you about this of course so i obviously did not have a normal high school experience or a normal like childhood experience i had a different no, one we've than most es- people we've, we've established so, that you, it yeah. sounded like you were just walking around in the woods thinking you were going to school. Well, I never went bushes. to woods. I never, we don't have woods, right? Well, hiding up. behind bushes, like whatever. But I definitely like, I don't remember ever going to a New Year's Eve party. I think I always was at home and like, you know, go outside at midnight with like my siblings or like maybe a friend uh-huh. would spend the night and like we'd bang pots and pans outside and be like, happy new year. And then go back inside and go to bed. Like it was never like, we'd always count down and whatever. And it was How always How old are fun. you at this point? All the way up until college. <laughs> Like I never went to a party. Just triggered. I remember I played, so I played trumpet in the school band in seventh mm-hmm. and eighth grade. And I remember uh, New Year's Eve, mm-hmm. uh, seventh grade. I was like, just, you know, I was home alone with my parents right. and I like, was like, can I go outside and play my trumpet at midnight? So I That's stayed amazing. up all the way till midnight. And then I went out on our front steps and, and like. Played old Lang Zion. Like what did you play? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I was, yeah, I just How play. depressing if you were just like at midnight, you heard like one lone solo trumpet playing old Lang Zion. That's real sad. But that's like. Like the, 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 um, like the most like nerdy kind of New Year's. That's not nerdy. That sounds actually like my dream. That's like amazing. You know, in, in context of what I thought it was, I thought I was a nerd at that moment. No, I was being like, that's that's all about me. Yeah. To, but like to you, I guess that's just what you did till you were That sounds like really cool. Um, Um, but my question was going to be to you was that. So for me, like looking at movies and TV shows and whatever, it's always like anticipated like that New Year's Eve kiss, Uh you know, like whatever. And so my question to you is like, okay, so you'd go to these parties, right? Now you'd all count, you'd be with all your buddies and all your friends and whatever, and people from school. So you'd count down 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 5, 3, 2, 1. Then would everyone just like scream happy new year and like throw fireworks? Or was it like people like would find a person to kiss? There was an extreme amount of pressure to to orchestrate kissing someone at that moment. I mean, and usually you have like a, uh, some sort of significant other type mm-hmm. thing. Uh, and so then that's it. But, but there have been like, you know, single new years for sure, where it was like, there was pressure on that for whatever reason. So like all, you and all your friends are all around. And then like at midnight it's clock strikes midnight <laughs> and everyone just like silently kisses their partner. Um, I, I guess yeah, kind of for Is like say, a second, and then everybody's like hugging and high fiving and whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah, I don't know. It's a pretty strange thing, I guess. And it's not that weird. I guess like if you if you know you and I have been I guess out and about you know and kiss when, like New Year's and whatever. So it's like I guess it's a thing, but I feel like it's different when you're like out at a restaurant or a big event or like there's a bunch of people around as opposed to like at a house party with a few friends. Yeah, and then it's kind of weird, maybe. Yeah, but well, I mean, you're not overdoing it. It's just kind of like like a peck. I, I think poo. it's just like a tradition, right? Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can remember one year, like, uh, like one of my first years in, in LA there, we were, I was out with friends at like, um, uh, this new year's Eve, like rocking in the new year's Eve kind of thing at a bar, mm-hmm. uh, off of Fairfax. And I remember our friends were in a band and they were going to play second, but the first band played, and they played and we were like, wow, this guy's really good. This is like a really small bar. And it was Bruno Mars. What? And he was incredible. Yeah, he's such a good performer. And we were all like, "What's who's this guy? What's going on? And two years later, he's like the biggest. Yeah. You know, he was instantly famous, like really fast. But I remember there was this girl that I kind of liked and knew she liked me, but my friend also liked her. And oh, I was there at this thing with triangle. my friend. 
and her friend was there and she was dating our other friend. And then we heard that she was coming to get there, like right before but midnight. But you and your friend who both liked her were there? Yes. <gasps> and, and well, I, but I knew that she didn't. Like she, him? Yeah. She had told me that and she told me that she, you know, she liked me or whatever, but like, oh my God. but like we weren't anything. We weren't like, but like. I like my, I found out because this friend of mine came up to me and he goes, there's a storm brewing. And it was really ominous and intense. And I was like, what was that about? And then my other friend told me like, oh, so-and-so is coming here because she wants to kiss you at midnight. Mm. And he, you know, and he's all. Did you? Mad. I think so. Yeah. Did he get mad? Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah. no. Then he had to drive me home. Like we drove there together. Oh no. Uh, yeah, that was pretty bad. Oh no. Did, Did you, you ever? Guys, what? Well, Go ahead. Uh, no, I was gonna no, say, I, did you guys did you guys date after that? Uh, for a little bit, yeah. Okay. Did um did you ever see the ball drop in person? I would rather in New York. do anything else. I'd I rather know, gouge out my eyeballs with Flynn's fingernails. Yeah, and you know how the, sharp those can get. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No, I have Times never. Square, New York, never did it because no, you lived in New York for a couple of years. I did. There is no desire in my heart and my soul and my brain to ever do such an insane thing yeah, because it's freezing cold and you can't pee. I saw a bunch of right. discourse about it recently, like in the last couple of days online. Urination discourse? Yeah. About people like where they, do they just wear diapers? Like, is that what happens? I guess so. I guess you could. Have you done it? Uh, I've gone to a party in New York city on New Year's Eve once. And the, uh, the friend's apartment was actually in times square, but like, uh, 10 stories up. Mm -hmm. So it was really crazy. Cause like you kind of had to get through it the back way, you know what I mean? Didn't go through there. But then once we were in their apartment, which had a lot of windows, you were kind of like, just if you could see everything and it was like, wow, wow would I not want to be down there? Yeah. No way. That looks, it looks terrible. Awful. I can remember like being up front at Coachella when I first went there, when I first moved out here and being in a crowd like that and people having to pee and our group of friends would kind of like form a pee circle. What? So the person in the middle could pee. Just on the floor? Yeah. In the dirt? Yeah. Well, in your the guy polo friends for, or girls? Mostly for girls. Wow. That's so bizarre. So, they could, so we, we would kind of form like a little urination circle around them. So I've done they that could at the beach before. Pee. Like friends have held up towels yeah. for me to pee in the sand. <laughs> Isn't that what people do to like change bathing suits? Not like. Well, I did Friends it to have pee. formed towels and you pee in yeah, the sand? Yeah, towel circle. And I peed in the sand. A whole, like, how many people does it take to make a- um, Three tops. Yeah. You can get away with two, a, honestly. A, a piece, a urination circle takes more. Yeah, um, yeah not because you, beach, if you especially concert, don't have a towel. Because we're not all carrying around towels. Right, exactly. At concert, yeah. Well, before we get too deep into this peeing at the beach conversation, <laughs> we, I think we should say we hi here? to our first sponsor, which is Primal here? Kitchen. This episode of Relax is brought to you by Primal Kitchen. So Eric and I, we love to cook. We do. Uh, we don't have time to that often these days, but we do love to. That's what we did for New Year's Eve. We were like, hey, let's stay home and cook We together. don't have time to cook for ourselves. We're cooking right. a lot for babies. Right. But sometimes we need some us time. We do. But now we like cooking even more when we have time to do it because of Primal Kitchen. We have some amazing products from them that yes. we're really enjoying. Like, for example, my husband here is a, a mayo obsessed man. There's never enough mayo in our it house. It runs through my veins. But he is soaked on the mayo from Primal Kitchen. And so am I. It's super yum. Uh, number one condiment in natural grocery made with avocado oil. Ugh, avocados and everything. I know, Come but on. you like it in their mayo. I do like it in the mayo. Come on. Let's, yeah, you can't see it. Yeah, well, when we're cooking, we want to maximize flavor while minimizing effort. We love that with Primal Kitchen, we can still get all of the taste of our favorite condiments, but with high quality ingredients. Primal Kitchen products are made with purposeful, high quality ingredients, good fats from avocado oil, no artificial sweetener, and most importantly, delicious flavor. That make choosing products products for you and your family easier than ever. It makes us so happy and confident to know that what we're enjoying as a family is so straightforward. Eric is always going back for more mayo now that we've got Primal Kitchen. mayo. You know what I like about uh, Europe? No. They're dipping fries in mayo. And I'm like, yes, these are my people. I know. It's, you know. Yeah, I, I understand. It's my genetics. But they got lots of yummy stuff. Their ketchup is amazing. And I'm pretty, I'm a ketchup snob, guys. You are. And I think it's good. You're an elitist when it comes to ketchup. They got a yummy avocado oil, um, yummy buffalo. Come on now. It's sold out three times online. Yummy Their buffalo? Their newest addition. Just yeah. buffalo. <laughs> Their buffalo sauce. Okay. 
Be more specific. Sorry. I'm just telling you what it says. They've got it says yummy buffalo hot. on the page. I didn't know. Relax. They've got yummy hot, yummy soy. You're just saying <laughs> things without saying the sauce part. Buffalo sauce. Put so it in it's context. a condiment here, child. Anyway. In the new year, we're committed to cooking more and Primal Kitchen makes that as simple as can be. We're stocked up and ready to take on 2023. Oh my gosh, rhyming. Love that. Listeners of Relax, you guys can save 20% at primalkitchen.com slash relax. Whoa. Or find Primal Kitchen products at your favorite local grocery store or retailer. How convenient. Check it out. Okay, we're back. We never went anywhere. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're What's still, your okay, relax? We're we didn't, we didn't do here. relaxes yet, lovey. Okay. Let's relax this week. Uh, I got a couple. Okay. I'm going to start with this. Okay. I am, um, I won't say grown, but I'm adult man by standards of um, age, if that means anything to you. But I spend most of my uh, waking moments with people four and under, mm-hmm. um, sitting on the floor, mm-hmm. surrounded by... Um, mess and toys Mm -hmm. and play things in a desperate attempt to keep them um, happy and fulfilled and entertained. Mm -hmm. Um, I am the entertainer uh, for a lot of babies Mm -hmm. and they have a lot of toys. And I, and I, it's funny you revert to like a younger version of you. You kind of, you play, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I like to play with them. You know what I mean? I don't watch them play. I play with them. Um, And I picked up, a miniature version of an etch a sketch mm-hmm. the other day. And I tried to, to do anything with it. And I was like, Ugh. this is the worst <laughs> toy I've ever played with. I And I was like, it made me boiling angry right. that it existed. And that was a, it was like a, a cultural phenomenon. It was, we had one when I was a kid and I could never do anything with it. Can't, you can't I remember do I spent anything hours trying to make a star. Anything, anything. You can't. I can't, could make like a line. Now I like really want to use it and like oh, try to do should. it. You should. And it'll make you'll. I'll just hear things breaking. Like you're, it'll no, make you so mad. No, I feel like so I get. Mad. I'll just get laser focused and do it for three hours trying to do one thing on it. And th- I'm sure there were like people who were like could do it or master I, yeah, it. Yeah, people or whatever. can make like beautiful art on it. But I was like, I'm like, this is really this this scam is still going on. Like people are still buying. Etch a sketches for kids as if it's like a toy. They have no, I mean, they put it in their mouth and then they throw it to the side. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and Flynn has no, you know, gets frustrated by mm-hmm. it, I think, as, you know, as much as I do. And I was like, what, how does this thing even exist? And so I looked it up. Um, and the, the inventor of the etch a sketch is a guy named Andre Casagnes. Wait, okay. wait, I'm sorry. I really have to interrupt you. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. I just took my hand for those of you listening and helped Eric because he wasn't talking in the mic. So I was like kind of guiding his mic towards his mouth. But then I, my hand went down to his knee Uh and I touched his knee and I am like, this has to, we have to stop talking about everything else because I can't think about anything else. These are the softest pants I've ever (laughs) touched in my life. I don't, I've never felt, this is, my brain is exploding because in my many years on this earth, Uh uh-huh. This is a new texture and a new feeling to That's my hands. That's what I thought too when I got them. Yeah. So I'm like, my brain's going like trying to compute. Like it's like, wait, cotton, polyester, silk. What is this? I don't, I don't know, know what this feeling is. It's the softest material I've ever felt. It's it is. It absolutely is. What is that? I bought this pair of pants. The next day, went back and and bought a backup pair of these same pants. Do they have pockets? I have, I have two. Do they have pockets? And I also have them in two other colors. Do they have pockets? Yes, they got pockets. Oh my God. They got pockets and then like one little better. zipper pocket on the butt. I don't like zipper pockets. I think that's um, insane. They are but. a yoga brand. I'll say it's it's a newer, it's called like Viore or something. Why are they so soft? I don't know. But they had that, remember there was that store on that what street? What is going on? They're so soft. And I soft. go, I got to go in this fancy yeah, yoga store. Yeah, I know. And store. I stood outside, yeah. And you were like, oh, yoga No, stuff. I didn't do that. I went inside and then everyone was staring at me because I wasn't, I don't look like yoga stuff's not my jam. So I was like, I couldn't even pretend to look around. Like I was, yeah. and people were just staring at me and kept going, can I help you? And I was like, oh, I just got to go stand outside. See, I d- I'll get stuff like this because I think it'll motivate me to then do yoga or something or work out in some way. But like when I found these, I was like, oh my goodness, they're so soft. Yeah, and then I so bought soft? them and the person at the register was like, isn't this the softest material? I've I never felt anything bought, like it in my life. I have a million pairs now. Yeah, it's crazy. They're, oh, it's anyway, so great. they're so soft. Sorry to interrupt your story about the Etch-A-Sketch. That was just so jarring. I, it's, it's, 
Yeah, they're very soft pants, love. Uh, Andre Cassagnes, uh, he was a French electrical technician uh, who in, uh, a half a century ago invented this thing. Uh, if late 50s, early 60s, it made the equivalent, when it first became on sale, it made the equivalent of like $17 million wow. in sales when it first came out. There was a boom. And I just wanted to... I, I don't know. I don't know if there's still who uh, probably some like toy conglomerate owns it now or whatever the rights to it, but there's mm -hmm. probably like an heiress of Etch a Sketch out there who's like wow. a millionaire. That's crazy. Um, and they shouldn't be because this is it is total BS. That toy, hate it. I hate Etch a Sketch. <laughs> so oh my much. gosh! Um, I guess Etch a Sketches need to relax. Well, what did you do? Wait, you invented the thing that nobody can do anything with. That's not an invention. No, people can do it. It's it's, it's very It's a hard. negative invention. You've you've like not only have you not invented anything, you've less than I don't know. <laughs> it's less than an idea for a toy. And why is it for? I don't know. I I I always had one growing up, and I remember getting really obsessed with like trying to draw like my name in cursive with it, or drawing a star. I just remember always trying to draw a freaking star with that thing. Um. We're just, all these things that we get, we're just buying five minutes of peace at a time. Literally, it's from our worth children. it every time too. You're like, oh, they what played with bargain. that for two seconds. Um, my original relax um, though was going to be uh, you going to a Home Goods Marshalls with you. You mean, you, you, sorry, you said that you, they needed to relax. So did you mean that it's like heaven? See, you go. <laughs> did you mean to say that it's walking, like the best hour of your into, life? I don't know. Like the way that you... Your posture is better in there. You like, you, yeah. you know what I mean? Like everything, like you just, you, my health you're, is better. You're, yeah. You're glowing. You walk in there, you have oh, confidence. You goods. have like a strut, you get a cart and that I cart is full goods. on the top, full on the bottom. It's, you could buy everything in there and it's all apart. garbage. What are you talking about? It's all garbage. No, you, Okay. Do not. I feel like we've talked about this before. Like, how do things end up there? Like, do, where do they come yeah, we from? Have, we have talked about but that. But it's all stuff but that nobody wanted earth, at other stores ends up there. How can you look me in the face and say that it's garbage when just two nights ago, we hung the mirror that we bought there in the baby's room. And you were yeah, like, this is good. such a good mirror. We have to go back and get another one. Because guess what? It was, it's a huge, beautiful mirror. And it was $100. Same mirror again? Mirror. Same mirror. You say mirror? You say mirror? <laughs> You're like mirror. Okay. Mirror. <laughs> Do you really say mirror? Mirror. Mirror. Say, say innocence. I don't say mirror. Say innocence. I looked in the mirror today. You, you say, just said mirror, love. No, yeah, you, you, you'd be like, I looked in the mirror today. I don't go. <laughs> you, I did not go. I looked in the mirror today. I did not do that. I said we bought a mirror. A mirror. But you're saying M-E-E-R. You're saying mirror. That's what you say mirror. too. Say, mirror. say, 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 we mirror, mirror. You do not, mirror. do not act like you say mirror. I, I don't say mirror. I say mirror. <laughs> That's what I <laughs> no. just said. We're both saying it's mirror. It's different. Say it at the same time. Three, two, one, mirror. mirror. Okay, now you're saying mirror. <laughs> you're so dumb. You literally say mirror. No one says mirror when they're just talking quickly in a sentence. Uh, come on. Mirror. You are saying mirror. I'm doing it now. <laughs> I'm doing an impression of you. You're so weird. Anyway, do not act like yeah, you don't I know, love that, was that mirror. Yeah, that a bargain. When you can get one at Home Goods, it's huge and Diamond beautiful. Looks in the amazing. rough. Looks amazing. Hundred bucks. And the same exact mirror I saw on like West Elm for like $800. Furniture's really expensive. It's so expensive. And, and home furnishings. Goods gives you a freaking deal. Yeah. Home Goods. But it is. Rough. These are my places. These are my people. In a sea of like. Marshalls, get me, get me in there right now. But um, like, let me describe to you like a Marshalls Home Goods because now they're combined. Or sometimes. TJ Maxx, you know, they're all the same company. But I think we talked about yeah, that. We have, yeah, we have. But well, you walk in there and it's a sea of porcelain hands giving a peace sign and cutting boards I made out that of porcelain teak. Sign with and these just signs. like random like sculptures and the paintings there. Oh, don't get me I started love the on the paintings. I love them. And how they ended up in our house. Oh my gosh, just six foot by nine foot just streaks of oil paint I love glazed it. over with sparkles it's like why i love it why is this not in a horrible hotel like chain lobby it is. and all, but okay it is and also in my bedroom like it drives me that's that i really don't like and then just aisle after aisle of dusty dusty throw pillows the most you've ever seen in your life and just a, and another aisle where it's just like 
jumbled random sheets of all different shapes and sizes. It's so funny that and you're acting as though it is the most grotesque place in the world to you when you literally bookends the had bookend handfuls aisle. of crap that you wanted to buy. Oh, it's like, oh, we so need this cutting board. Oh, we need this chair. Oh, look at this chair. I love this chair. Oh, look at this I know. I need this well, basket. You need oh, look, this is a toilet paper roll holder. Look how great this is. We need this. Oh, we need these door. You but are doing the same need, thing as me. But we don't but need. But now you're acting as though any of it's it. just me. But we at don't least need. We don't actually need any of it, but guaranteed if we go there, you will, you will, Jurassic Park, life finds a way, you will find a way to spend at least $300 You do every too, time. though. You do this because you forget your credit card every time we go no, anywhere. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying you pick out just as much stuff as I do, if not more, at Home Goods every time. Uh-huh. At least if, if, it, if it's embarrassing or if it's weird or if people look down on home goods, whatever, at least I can admit like, yeah, I love a freaking home goods. I love a deal. I don't think you it's won't embarrassing. Even admit it, but you do it. I don't think it's weird. I think it's, it's absolutely bargain. But, but like I said, you have to find the diamonds in the rough. You gotta be careful there. You can't be buying those mugs that say like, um, coffee mom, you know what I mean? And like that black font that mm-hmm. they just put on everything porcelain. What do they say? Or maybe you do. Maybe you like those. Maybe that's oh, your thing. Oh, are you thing. talking about know. the like, the not, they don't say coffee mom. They'll literally say like flower. Yeah. <laughs> peace. Peace. Yeah. Lots of, well, yeah. Peace. Truth. Truth. And like the really skinny. Yeah. It's like the skinny font. Wait, that has a name. Font. I forget what it's called. You don't know the names of fonts, remember? No, but that one's very famous. Like uh-huh. it is, it's like very, very dog famous. Dog mom. Your dog mom's a big one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dog and oh, that, that grinds my gears. Actually, I have a relax, but I'll tell you after we say thanks for our, for a sponsor. Oh, please okay? tell me it's not Marshall's Home Goods. I wish it was. I know. Get involved, guys. Come we, talk, on. we talk about you a lot on I this podcast. I love you. Okay. Anyway, it's better help. So let's talk about better help, everybody. This show is sponsored by better help. When you're at your best, you can do great things, but sometimes life gets you bogged down and you may feel a little bit overwhelmed (laughs) or like you're not showing up in the way that you want to. Working with a therapist can help you get closer to the best version of you because when you feel empowered, you're more prepared to take on everything life throws at you. I love therapy. We talk about it all the time. I actually just reached out to my therapist last night because I want to start chatting with her again. I am a big advocate for therapy Um, I think it can help you through life's biggest challenges and, uh, you know, just life gets hard and things get thrown at you and it can really help you with things personally, internally for you, relationships, friendships, family can help you with communication. There's so many benefits to therapy. Even just talking your feelings out loud is so beneficial. Um, and that's what therapy can do. So if, if you have been thinking about trying out therapy, I would strongly recommend it. So if it's something you're thinking about, you could try BetterHelp. Um, It's convenient, flexible, affordable, and entirely online. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. If you want to live a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash relax with me today at 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash relax with me. Okay. So would you like to hear my relax? I would love to. I'd love nothing more. This is going to ruffle some feathers. Why? My relax this week, but that's okay. I'm here to ruffle feathers today. I'm starting this year off feisty. by pissing people off. Starting the year off feisty, starting Damn. the year off making some people <laughs> mad. And I'm not trying to make people mad. Just try to hear me out to the end of my little rant right now. Okay. So I was watching a ticky talkie the other day. And there's this girl doing a TikTok and she was talking about some like mom that she didn't like online mm-hmm. because of something she did with her kid or something. And I don't even remember who she was talking about or what it was in reference to because I was so annoyed by a sentence that she said. And she said, I understand what it's like to be a mom and how hard it is to have a baby because I have one. I have a fur baby. I have a dog. So I understand how difficult it is to be a mom. Mm -hmm. And I guffawed out loud, like spit out the nothingness that was in my mouth at the time. Yeah. Spit take, because I've heard people say this before and it is so frustrating 
to hear someone say, be, and, and by the way, I am not saying that it is not hard to have a dog. It is very hard to have a dog. It's a lot of responsibility. It's so much responsibility. And that is why we don't have one. That is why I'm like, no, we cannot get a dog right now right. because it is way too much work. It is so hard to have a dog and it is so much work, so much responsibility. And, and you, you love this dog so much. You feel like you're going to explode. It's like, it's a part of your family yeah, to have a dog. Truly, yeah. But having a dog is literally nothing like having a baby. In my experience, having three babies, is how, that's how many I've had. Uh-huh. I've had many a dog. Nothing, not even close. Yeah, they're not, they're, they're not in the same ballpark even. It shouldn't, it's not part of like, it's that discussion. It's it, to not me, it's like, equation. it's like, if, if you got to really like, a, a really bad hangnail or something <clears throat> like really painful. You know, when you get those like, Oh, they're the worst, like a really nasty, bad hangnail that kind of hurts. And uh-huh. it's like so super annoying. Okay. Like I'm not denying that like a hangnail really hurts and they suck and they're super obnoxious. But if I break my leg in front of you and I am screaming in agony on the ground about my broken leg and my, ble- I'm bleeding out all over the place. What and my is, bones, has, what is listen, let me get there. You? And my bones sticking, jetting out of my leg. And you come up Ugh. to me and you say, I know exactly how you feel. I have a hangnail. Like, no, that's a, like, that's a metaphor. That's, that's well, like what it feels like to me. Like it is not the same. Like it is, it is of course painful and not fun to have a hangnail, yeah, but it is not up, the same as a broken leg. It's and that's what I feel like it is comparing a dog to having a new baby. So you get woken up, you know, by dogs because they want to be let out and you just got to open the door and let them out. And they go out when well, you get woken up by babies and they've, or sick or have pooped themselves or peed themselves and then won't go back to, you know, it's so that's different. Well, there's a lot. That's and changing a diaper different. is different than like, Picking up poop with a poop bag. I feel like the, this is the only thing similar Feeding between them, a dog getting and kids it. to eat is so hard. With a dog, you just put on a bowl on the floor. Imagine doing that to our kids, like just throwing them some some chow from a bag and like a bowl on the floor, being I mean, like, eat that and walking away. I mean, we've kind of done that before. <laughs> throwing Cheerios <laughs> on the ground and been like, um, not really. Guys. It's not. Okay. It's not the same. But it just, I've, nope. I've just heard it a few times. So if you ever see so a tired new parent. And they're talking about how hard it is with the postpartum depression and anxiety and your, my body destroyed and aching in pain yeah. and going through the biggest physical change I could ever possibly go through that lasts for years usually and mentally and physically. And that's just the me physical part of it. And on top of that, you're dealing with a brand new human being. You are a hundred percent responsible for yeah, it's, keeping well, it's alive. Just, it's just if, different. If, if, if a woman, not- if a woman comes or a person comes up to you and, and says, I am tired because I just had a baby and I always waking me up all through the night and I'm not sleeping. And then this, and I, that just please don't say, I know how you feel because I have a pet. Like, don't do that. Right. And that is not to say that people don't like their dog can be their best friend and their oh family God, yes. and they love them so much. Moose you know is what my I mean? child. My cats are my and children. Like I have, I've, you know, to me, of course, your pets are your family. They are your children. They are a part of your life. I'm not saying the love that you have for them isn't, you know, it, incredible and yeah. strong we have two and cats powerful. And like they destroy is. everything. And we still have those two cats. I would be and they destroyed. I would be everything. destroyed heartbroken, gutted forever. If something happened to my pets, like I'm not saying that at all. I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying You're that saying it's, it's not the same thing. I'm just saying it's not the same thing. Yeah. I just don't compare it. So you can, you can say that it's hard to have a pet, but maybe not right after someone is talking about how hard it is to have a baby. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And people do do that. And yeah, they do. And they should relax about it. Just relax. Just talk about it another time. Right. In 10 minutes, you know? Yeah. Yeah, talk about your dog. So anyway, yeah, I just saw a TikTok that some girl said something That's like that. Funny. And I was like, what is happening? She, I was, need to chime, talk about she was chiming in. Uh, she did not have the right. It no, was, she it has the right. About her. It's a free speech. She can talk about whatever she wants. She oh can say gosh. she, I'm just saying from the other side, someone who has had children and lots of different pets, mm-hmm. it ain't the same thing. In my personal experience, it's not. Speaking of pets, mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about. Pets? Carpeted stairs. Oh, brother. And how, what, who's doing this? Why? We are. Why are, we, we have children is why. Well, we didn't put it there. No. And in our last house, we had child and then children mm-hmm. and we did not have carpeted stairs. Mm-hmm. I want to take that carpet off the stairs, lovey. No. 
Not while we have two babies. Like, oh, the one was just Flynn as a baby. Uh, you say it's a safety issue. Yes. But I think it's, the cats are just ripping it up. That's They're fine. all stains now. You bought a rug cleaner yeah, thing. Yeah, that needs to relax. And it made the stains infinitely worse. It's so it just weird, guys. I spread them out. Maybe someone can give us advice on this. Can I ask about that really quick? Sure, go ahead. So uh, there were a couple little stains on our our carpeted stairs. On our white carpeted stairs. They're like beige, like barfy beige? color. They're oh. like a hemp. I feel like it's a good <laughs> color to describe them. Hemp. Yeah, hemp beige. <laughs> hemp beige. And um, so I uh, was like, I'm going to buy a really nice carpet cleaner. I got this one that has like the best reviews ever. Like it's incredible reviews. It's a spot cleaner for like, if you have pets, deep cleans. It spots looks, you cannot it get looks out. crazy. I it looks like a spaceship. Ever. It has so many good reviews. I use it and it made the biggest stains in the world on our carpet. They I were like the little, instructions little, exactly. mar- little marks and now they're like giant like blobs. And you know what's crazy is I was like, this must be a problem that everyone has because this is crazy. This happened to me. And so I, I searched the internet like every page I could find, every blog, every post anywhere about this vacuum cleaner, this um, carpet cleaner to be like, someone else must have had this experience, like where they used it and it stained their carpet way yeah. worse. And I couldn't find anything. It looks terrible. It looks like yeah, we tr- we tried very poorly to clean up a crime scene at the bottom of it our looks stairs. Insane. It looks insane. looks so bad. So staircase. we do need new carpet there, but I don't think we should go carpetless because we have babies crawling up and down stairs with our guidance. Obviously we're always right there, but they're going to start to learn to walk soon. And we have three kids and there's two of us. So like when they start running, like we're not going to be able to have a, a parent on each kid at all times. And I'm so th- afraid of one of them slipping down stairs. Like that's really yeah. freaks me out. And carpet will definitely help them not to slip because hardwood slippery. Hardwood. It's not slippery. Where, what are you talking about? Hardwood is slippery. Are you insane? Well, it's it's it's, certain, it's more it's more it's surface. more slippery than c- carpet. Like you you couldn't like run into a sock slide on carpet, but like it's hard. I mean, it's most pe- most stairs are not carpeted. So on on a surface where you could run with socks on and slide on it, you would not consider that surface to be slippery. Not that's not slippery. When I'm talking about socks, you could slide on anything in socks. For, you you except, just except said carpet. you cannot slide on carpet, <laughs> and our kids wear socks. Let me say something. Let me post uh, an instance in, in, in which this could be more dangerous than than hardwood. Because when I grew up, my grand we did not have carpeted stairs, but my grandmother's house had carpeted stairs. And what did we do on the carpeted stairs all day long? Slide down them face first, feet first. We just would slide down them. We ruined those things. We wore down the edges. We, every grandkid would just slide down her carpeted stairs, having a ball. So I think you're gonna like slide down it on purpose. That's not true. First of all, was it shag carpet? It wasn't. Sh- it was. Oh, I loved it. But it was like a like a pale green. It was not. It was a l- little bit shaggy. Exactly. Because you slide down a shag carpet. This is not carpet to slide down. It's like a thin. It's not. I wouldn't oh, even call no, it carpet. Cut, cut you up. It's like a it's like a flat rug. It's like a what would you I don't even know. It's how not, to sleep. Not it's, shag, a low pile. It's, it's not shag. So this is not something you'd be tempted to slide down. Like we have a shag rug upstairs in the reading nook and Flynn will roll on that slide on it. He's like obsessed with it. So since it's not that kind of material, he's not going to slide down it. They have no well, desire to slide. Well, yeah. I remember when it just reminded me of my parents' house when we first moved in there when I was in fourth grade. The first thing my dad did was they had carpeted stairs. And we're talking about like the carpets, like lines, like the middle, like you just see the wood on the edges first thing he did was rip that up. Yeah. That's what we have. You just see the line of the wood on the side. Yeah. The, part, the issue is if we rip it up, it's obviously been there forever. And so there's going to be like weird staining on the wood now because the wood that's been exposed is going to be much lighter Original than the wood. Original and gorgeous. And no, I'm saying that like what's been exposed as to what's been hidden under carpet, they're going to be different colors and it's going to look weird. So we're going to mm. have to get someone to come and polish all the wood and like fix it all and stain it all to be matching again. And also it's not just carpet on the stairs. That carpet is attached to all of the carpet upstairs in all the halls and the rooms. So you'd have to rip up all of the carpet everywhere. I hope so. It's already getting destroyed by the cats. And muddy socks. So then you want them to r- destroy really beautiful hardwood? Like, I say we wait. They're not going to claw it. I love that we this conversation on the podcast, but like, I say we wait. We don't get to talk. There's children until, screaming at us. Yeah. I say we wait until the kids are old enough to like not be destroying everything. So 18, 
years. <laughs> and then, but I'm just so worried we're going to rip it up and they're just going to ruin all the beautiful hundred year old hardwood underneath it. I'd rather them destroy it. Like we've lived here a month and they've destroyed that carpet on the stairs. Yeah. So why would we rip it up so then they could just like, it's ugly carpet. We're going to rip, rip it, it up, up someday. to get a different carpet. Well, because I don't want them to ruin the beautiful hardwood that like. I don't think cats claw on hardwood. They don't claw on hardwood. They have nails. So I don't know. They don't anyway, claw. This they is such a stupid conversation to have on the podcast. Um, uh, the stairs in my parents' house that mm-hmm. after he took the carpet off became like a security alarm. They became I know they're so loud. They became, it's probably a little bit like this relative to the same age of this house. Like the stairs creaked like you wouldn't believe and we could never sneak out mm-hmm. and they would always know when we came home because they were, they and still are they're so the loud, loudest yeah. stairs on the planet. So I wonder if that would be good too because then the, our stairs would become really loud and we'd know. No, nah, our room's too far from the stairs. Was coming. I don't know. Well, let's talk about our next sponsor for a minute and then we can fight more about stairs. Helix. Helix. Oh, it's been a while. Hi, Helix. How are we going to hear anyone going down the stairs if we're sleeping so soundly on our Helix mattress, love? That's true. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know how we're going to hear anyone. Uh, You guys, we love Helix here and we're so excited they're sponsoring this episode today. So how long have you guys had your mattress? I know we had ours a real long time till we switched to Helix and now we're obsessed with it. Our sleep has improved so much in the last year, two years. How long have we had this thing? A uh, while, a year at least. Yeah, almost two years. I don't know. It's been a long time and we've really enjoyed it. It feels super cozy, nice. Uh, we don't sleep ever, but the moments we do get to lay down flat on a mattress we don't are hit REM. glorious. We're not hitting REM. But it's not the mattress's fault. No. Um, it's just being a parent, you know? So yeah, our, not only do we love it, Flynn loves it. Our kids love it. Our pets love it. Spiders love it. There were spiders on it the other day that were crawling around trying. Oh, the spiders in this house love that mattress. (laughs) Then they just, just crawling on your, on your, on the mattress right next to your gaping open mouth. This has nothing to do with the mattress (laughs) mattress, by the way, this is just our house. This has lots of spiders, but, um, (laughs) the mattress does not come with spiders actually at all. Uh, Helix sleep is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a collection of luxury models, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. So how will you know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? Take the Helix sleep quiz and find your your mattress that is perfect for you in just under two minutes. And your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. And that is why they offer a hundred night risk-free trial. Try out your new Helix mattress, see how your body adjusts. And if you decide it's not the best fit, you're welcome to return for a full refund. How amazing is that? Everyone is unique and everyone sleeps differently. And that is why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. They got models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side, models with a more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in stomach and back sleeping positions, plus enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. And if you spine, you spine or your spine is what I meant to say. (laughs) And if your spine needs some extra TLC, They got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design combining individually wrapped steel coils in the base with premium foam layers on top. It's the perfect combination of comfort and support. So we took the Helix sleep quiz and we are matched with the Midnight Lux model Mm -hmm. uh, for side sleepers because that's what we do. And it's been fabulous. We've really liked it, as we mentioned earlier. And so, yeah, you guys should check it out if you want one. Uh, And because not only... Is this mattress <laughs> the best we've ever slept on? But the setup is really fast and easy, and it's really fun to unbox it and watch it kind of explode out of this box. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Uh, How'd they deliver- get it in there? I, know, I, I can't believe they deliver it in that tiny little box straight to your door, and they do it for free. Plus, Helix mattresses are American-made and come with a 10- to 15-year warranty, depending on the model. And remember, you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. And if you don't love it, which we know you will... But if you don't, they will pick it up for you and give you a full refund, refund or refund. <laughs> you need <laughs> to lay, you need episode, to lay down. I'm clearly yeah. tired. Don't want to take our word for it. Well, Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired Magazine. It is even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine as a go to solution for improving your sleep. So Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash RCE. With Helix, better sleep starts now. And we're still here. <laughs> we never left. <laughs> uh, can I stay on the cats? You can stay on. Yeah, you can stay can on. Can I the stay cats. on pets, cats? Yeah. Carpet. 
Sure. So uh, we have two cats. We do. They are very much We're about indoor to have cats. Three. Yeah, right. I want another cat so bad. Yeah, right. They just destroy everything at Harry. Oh, Whereas, besides so the point, when so I grew cute. up, we had three cats when I was a kid, uh, and it didn't make interfere that much with daily life because they were indoor outdoor cats. You know what I mean? They would spend most of their day oh, outside, killing uh, chipmunks, bringing chipmunks back, and leaving them on the front steps, um, running around in the woods, doing whatever they do. I don't um, think I've ever seen a chipmunk in real life. No. I they don't, don't have, have. They don't really have one. Not where I grew up. Here. No, they're all, they're they're uh, plentiful on the East Coast. Are they like the up. size of a squirrel? No, they're smaller. They're they're, they're like they're smaller. Yeah, I always thought they were bigger. Like that no, they're little. Oh, cute. Yeah, anyway, with, they're very pretty. I think. And like the, they're not like up in trees. They're like in rock walls and hmm. things. But the cats love to kill them. Okay, so and then they would come in at night. You know, when it got cold, and they'd do their thing. So like there was. A litter box in our basement, but like, I don't think they even use it because they would just do their business out. You know, they learned to they kind of do their business outside. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, and uh, they were great and I loved them. And then I, and I'd never had an indoor cat, never known an indoor cat, like permanently indoors, never goes outside until uh, I met Gus mm-hmm. and then Daisy. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were in where we used to live. We're always inside and right. destroyed everything, every piece of furniture, the walls, mm-hmm. the crown, everything. Um, like they were trying to claw their way out. Mm-hmm. Now we live in a different place and there's kind of like, like a little bit of woodsiness to it. And uh, it, where we used to live in LA, they would, if you open the door, they would just kind of stare out like, oh, what is that hell? Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going out there. That's looks terrible. You know what I mean? But now if we open a door, they dart. Yeah. They want to go they, outside. They, they wait around doors, like kind of hiding. And then you open the door and they dart outside and they just run. They're not trying to run away, by the way. They, they no. like, they love this house. They want to be love, outside. They love being outside. They really like exploring outside. Yeah. So I think that's pretty great. I, at first when we, I was like, we got to keep all the doors shut. Oh my God. Like, how do we, you know, kids running around, like, how do we keep the doors shut all the time? But you really can't. Yeah. So it's good that they're kind of like adapting to it, but I still think that they're not prepared, um, that we have not prepared uh, as their fur parents, we have not prepared them for life on the outside. Well, that's why they aren't outside cats. They're right. But cats. now they're spending time outside and it's not uh, on my watch. Not much. But it's just when they run and then I can't catch them. And I'm like, okay. And then they come back to the door eventually. Yeah, like, cats are smart like that. Yeah. They never, they haven't been um, outside long. But they are not um, apex predators by any means. Mm-hmm. They are complete dunces. I mm-hmm. think they have no. Um, not much for brains. Daisy doesn't have a brain. I think Gus has Gus brains. Gus is pretty smart, yeah. Um, but there are coyotes that I've heard I at thought night. This, this is going much different than there I thought. There are mountain lions. Like, are you talking about concern for them? Because I thought you were going to talk about litter box. I problem. am, but I think like, you know, we got to let them, you got to let them spread their wings and fly. You know what I mean? You want them to be outdoor cats? A little have you bit. Lost your I want mind? them to They're spend. Persian I, cats. I think we just, you know, we just baby steps kind of what we've been doing. Can Persian cats just can't be outside? How They're is it a species? To be outside. Are they just completely inbred to have those flat faces, I think so. like to like sit on like the, I don't know the lap of like a, a, a king of England in the 1700s for like a portrait painting? I'm not sure. Is that sure, why they exist? I don't know, but I know that they're very cute and sweet, and they're not outdoor cats. Like when I got them, I read everything I could about them, tried to learn as much as I could, obviously, and because I wanted to take care of them the best of my ability. And everything I read was like, these are not not outdoor pets. Do not let them go outside. So they go out with supervision, sometimes with Eric, but I never try to let them go outside. And Eric's like, just let them be outside and inside. No, I don't. I don't let them outside. It's it's only when they like escape yeah. and I can't then like, and they don't come back and they just go for it. I'm like, yeah, live your life. It's always during the day. Don't, you know, at night I'll chase them down. I chased down one in the rain in the dark I know, the Daisy. other night because like, I don't, I don't think she knew what she was doing. No, she has no brain. Uh, me and Flynn were at a park a couple of weeks ago. And there was a girl there. She had brought her cat and she had it on a leash. That's my dream. And Flynn extremely audibly, audibly goes, that girl's got a cat. Like it was, <laughs> and, and she laughed. There's, it was pretty funny. We kind of do but have three cats. I feel like that's cats. you. Have you done that? No, we kind of do have three cats because there's a stray cat that's always in our backyard. Oh, fast bush cat. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm having an allergy attack. So if you hear my sniffle and sneezes, I like, don't know what's going on. I can barely keep my eyes open. But yes, um, fast bush cat. Yeah, it's fast bush cat is this cat that comes from the bush 
and sits on a rock and Flynn named it Fast Bush Cat because anytime it sees us, it gets really skittish and it just dives straight We've never gotten close to this bush. cat. It is so, it's always so far away. Yeah, it, if it knows like we can see it from the kitchen window. You okay? You want to stop? <laughs> no, I might need to pause for a second. I can't breathe. <laughs> It's a bit distracting. Yeah, I think it would be. Can you say we're going to take a quick break for Kalinda? We're going to take a quick break for Kalinda to do some nose stuff. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going on with me tonight. I know this happens a lot, but tonight's really bad. Like, my eyes are kind of burning. So sorry Sorry. for hearing all the sniffles and sneezes. You might hear a couple more. But anyway. We're getting to the end here. Yeah. Uh, And I'd be remiss if I didn't say Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Didn't we say that? We did at the beginning. You did. I didn't though. Oh. And I wondered, because uh, we, we were in that time of year now where people say, strangers, mm-hmm. any interaction you have with a stranger, mm-hmm. they say happy new year. Mm-hmm. And how long do you think this is, it's okay to go on for? Well, first of all, a lot of people say happy new years and that kind of bugs me. Oof. Um, because it's happy new they year. Do? Yeah. People say happy, no- happy new years. Well, I can see you saying it like on the day. Like if it's new year's day, happy new year's. I guess, but still, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, I'd say people say it for like a week or two. Right. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that I say it. I say happy holidays in December, uh-huh. but I don't think I say happy new year. I say, I would say it on the day. Happy new, which by the way, I had a horrible conversation with a doctor. <laughs> so yesterday, can I tell this story? Sure. I had the weirdest conversation. One of my biggest pet peeves in the whole world is when doctors make you feel stupid. Like, listen, doctors. We know we're dumber than you. Like, that's why you are a doctor. And I am not. I'm coming to you because you're smarter than me. I often say, well, I'm not a doctor because I know. You're not a doctor and you're not as smart as doctors. (laughs) Like, doctors are smart. They go through a lot of schooling and work very hard to have the brains that they have. Right. So- I, it really bothers me when doctors go out of their way to make me feel stupid or embarrass me. And I feel like it happens sometimes. Yes. And it's hard to find a doctor that doesn't do that, in my opinion and in my experience. So anyway, I called a doctor yesterday um, about something that was going on with someone in our family. It wasn't serious. It wasn't a big deal. But it was just something we wanted to get checked out. And so I called a doctor to ask, left a message because it was a holiday. So I was like, well, they'll call me back when they can. Mm -hmm. It wasn't urgent. So I just had a question. And so this doctor calls me back. That's on call. On New Year's Eve. On New Year's Eve. And, uh, And so I pick up the phone. And he says, hi, this is Dr. So-and-so. And And I go, hi, thank you so much for returning my call. And his response was verbatim. This is the direct quote because it was so shocking. It's burned in my mind. I said, thank you so much for giving me a call back. And he said, you called me. Like so we, it was so weird. And it was like, he was so mad. And I, but I was like, I was so confused because yeah, I did call him. Mm -hmm. But he called me back. Maybe he was saying like it's what's part of my job as a requirement is that if you call, I have to call you back. I just feel like it's call doctor. I guess, but I just feel like it's kind to say like if someone gives you a call back to say like I always say if someone calls me back, I go oh thanks for giving me a call back. Like I always say thanks for calling me back. Like I always say thank you. Is that not normal? What's he gonna say like well of course yeah no I have a like well I don't know he just goes like yeah sure like and then we can have a conversation he doesn't have to say anything he could literally be like it was snippy it was very snippy it was it was so awkward because he goes you called me and I was like and it was silent on the phone because I was like shocked I was like and then my mind goes wait did I just call I just picked up the phone what is he talking about like then I was like wait did I call him I'm so confused right but he had called so I was like maybe he heard you wrong maybe he heard you and you're like oh thanks for calling me and you thought he was just reaching out to check in (laughs) I don't know it was really maybe that's what it was but it was very harsh how he said it and then it was because you are awkward on the phone so who knows what you said when you answered it you heard me you were there (laughs) I said thanks for calling me back (laughs) anyway maybe he heard thanks for calling me and it cut out when I said back. And so then he was like, what, you called me? But it was still, I feel like was a weird response uh, because then it's silent because I was like shocked. I didn't know what to say because I felt so uncomfortable. I felt so terrible. And then I go, oh, I'm so- I just meant like, thank you because I know it's a holiday and you're probably busy with, you know, I just, I'm sorry. And so then I, then I did get awkward because I was like, I was like, it seemed like he was offended. I called him in the first place or something. Uh-huh. And I was like, I'm sorry. No, I just meant, I'm thinking for coming back on a holiday. Like it's, he's like, he's like, <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. That was just a new year's Eve joke. I guess it didn't work. That's so weird. And I was like, 
Is there a New Year's Eve joke tell, like getting mad at someone that they called to you that I don't know about? Is this like a common joke that I'm unaware of? Um, but he was... He's testing out new material. He it was bombed. so weird. And so then we had called him earlier about this in the day about the same issue. And we're given like kind of an annoying answer. Just kind of like, ah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. So it's like, you know, maybe seven, eight hours later. And I was like, Hey, that thing I didn't think was an issue. You said wasn't an issue. I think maybe it could be an issue. I just wanted to ask you a couple more questions about it. And he was like, when I, I brought up the whole situation to him again, I was like, this is what's going on. I just wanted to get double checked on it and ask a couple questions about it. And he was like, well, no one told me that. I didn't know that. And I, I didn't say anything back, but in my head, I was like, my husband spoke to you on the phone. Like, yeah. D- just like a, a mere few hours ago. And he told you all this and you told us we were insane and it wasn't a big deal. But like, and then he was like acting like it was a big deal, but he was so snippy and rude to me on the phone. It was so insane. And I know it was a holiday. So he probably just did not want to be working that day. It was the end of the year. He's over it. Like I get it, but it was just like, I just really don't like it when doctors are mean to me and make me feel stupid. It has happened to me many times in my life. And so I think I'm traumatized honestly by one of my first dentist's experiences that was terrible. Cause I always think about that. When I think about bad doctor's experiences, my first horrible experience with a dentist is, was so traumatizing that like, I've never trusted anyone who's like a doctor or dentist since then. I thought, yeah, I've, I have a, a bad dentist story too. Yeah. They can, I, they can be, I, I, they're, uh, they can be so mean. Yeah. I once had a dentist um, tell me that I did not need Novocaine for a cavity. And he drilled it and it really hurt. Yeah. I, and now I have a fear I had of a similar. I had a similar experience. My first traumatizing one was. He didn't say him. what it was. He's, he gave me the Novocaine. First of all, he like grabbed my whole cheek like this and he gave me the shot of Novocaine or whatever. And while he's doing it, he jiggled my cheek like this really they high. Do that, yeah. He was like, then now you won't feel it. And I'm like, no, I definitely feel the very extremely huge needle that you are jamming into my whole head. I think they should do the shake to spread out the. I don't know, but it was no, so painful. I don't know why they do that, but it's, it is, it's so it's uncomfortable. Awful. The, the, uh, the latex gloves in your mouth it's and, the worst. and like the texture and like the shaking. Yeah. I'd re- that's my least but favorite part. It was like my first cavity filling experience that I can remember. And I was like 10, maybe 11. And he gave me the Novocaine and then he was like, you know, is it still numb or is it numb? Tell me if it's numb. Can you feel this? And I was like, yeah, I can feel that. So then they had to give me more. And so then after I was done, um, they filled the cavity. It was all very painful and it totally sucked. I stood up to leave and my mom was like talking to the receptionist about my next appointment. And I started to faint. I was like, mom, I don't feel good. I'm dizzy. Oh wow! And she was like, no, you're fine. Whatever. And I was like, mom, I'm really, really dizzy. I felt really weird. And we got to the car, we walked out to the car and I fainted in the car. And then I fainted when I got home. And I was like fainting. I was blacking. It was like so weird. I had the weirdest experience and I was crying. I was a disaster. I was like, it was so, it was like the worst. So mom called the dentist and was like, what did you do to my daughter? She right. keeps fainting and blacking out. She's sobbing. She's a total disaster. Yeah. And they were like, she's just nervous. And my mom was like, she's nervous when the, it's over. And they were like, yeah, sometimes, you know, if you just get nervous, you faint. And I was like, what? And they, what? they totally like, I was like, mom, they gave me something weird. I don't know. Like, why am I fainting? So like, Ever since that experience, it was like so scary. And then I was totally gaslit. And like, they were like, no, you're, we didn't do anything to you. You didn't faint because of us. You fainted because you were just, you're just nervous. And I was like, what are you talking about? But that was my first time I ever fainted. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. And it was so painful. Not the fainting, but the, the cavity filling. Yeah. Anyway, that was, I always think about that when I think about doctors and dentists, I don't like. Yeah. Oh, you're so smart. Well, we don't trust you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just avoid that. No, some of my favorite people in the world are like my one of my uh, genuinely my favorite people in the yeah. entire world is my doctor, who's yeah, I was like, kidding. Yeah, a I know. genius, brilliant woman. Um, and she would never make you feel stupid. No, she would share her incredible wealth of knowledge with you to enlighten you and make you a better person and a healthier person. So yeah, uh, so a week you think people can say Happy New Year? <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I I've had someone say Happy New Year to me like. We're talking like January 31st and happy new year. Grow up. Those people need to relax. Relax. You get two days. I'd say it's cut off now. If anyone anyone says it now, it's not that I don't want people to be happy in this new year, but it's not a, 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 it still is a new year. It's not a way to, to interact and greet strangers. 
Don't just. I guess don't. it's pretty new. <laughs> I guess a couple of days is pretty new. If I've only had something for two days, I'd be like, yeah, it's new. But like, when's when you have something like Look, when is it not new? You still call our twins newborns, <laughs> and they're almost a year and a half old. I, like, I know. I guess anyone else. If I do always, anything if he's down, he's ever mad. He's like anything I down. I go. Newborn I have twins. newborn twins. Yeah. He still says I have newborn twins. When are they? Was they toddlers? Yes, they're when toddlers. Does that happen? They're toddlers. How long are they newborn for? Like a few months. All right, so you can say Happy New Year for a few months. Now I kind of want to say New Year's. Yeah. See, you're not supposed to say that. Anyway, thanks for listening, everyone. Happy fun. New Year. I hope you have a Happy New Year's, fabulous, guys. wonderful year. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. For episode 100. <gasps> it's a party next week. What are we going to do? I don't know. Probably nothing. We'll do something. Let's do something. We got to do something. We'll do something great. We'll see you guys next 100? week. 100? 100. You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax, that's the name of our podcast.